Hello and welcome back to Catch and Cook California for day number two of our overnight adventure with Fishing Chef. Join us today as we break camp, climb down a cliff, cook up a bushcraft breakfast, do a little fishing, cook up the wild turkey we shot the day before, and make some one-of-a-kind Vietnamese banh mi surf and turf sandwiches. alive good morning the sun's about to rise so we're going fishing it's not even sunrise yet <laughs> but, uh, it is beautiful it is absolutely gorgeous today so Are you serious? That's what your name means? Yeah. Dude, that's a good name. <laughs> In I, Chinese, yeah. I got stuck with kind and handsome one. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good too. Good morning. Good morning. I have one word for you, sir. Uh, Coffee. <laughs> I know. Coffee. I know. Coffee. Coffee. Okay, I get you, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Don't ask too many questions. I don't have any coffee in me yet. <laughs> me either. Guess what? Slight problem. <laughs> Kevin forgot the propane for the stove. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to the beach. We're mm -hmm. gonna make a fire for coffee. Mm -hmm. right? Why? Because coffee can. is the lifeblood of capitalism. <laughs> We are camping. We shot a wild turkey yesterday. If you didn't join us for episode one, definitely check that one out. That was a lot of fun. And uh, now the ocean is finally calm for the first time in like six months. So we are going fishing. So we got the packs loaded up with everything. Some dry wood for kindling and everything for wild turkey, bomb sandwiches. All right, so we're headed down the cliff and we are going fishing. Everybody at the party kept asking me, hey, why are you wearing rain boots? That's because I forgot to bring anything else. And now, I'm pretty glad I've got rain boots. This is the trail down. Fishing with Fishing Chef. <laughs> So we're all trying to keep one hand free, that way we can really stabilize. It's very important when you're hiking down these cliffs. A lot of this uh, central to northern California bedrock is actually gray wacky and sandstone. And both of them, as you can see right here, are very friable. They just come apart just to the touch. So you really can't rely on a lot of your handholds. So always keep one hand free, three points of contact and just take it slow. This is tick country. Martin just pulled that one. It was burrowed in. How do you feel about that? I don't like ticks. Why do you not like ticks? Because they're gross. Because they suck? They use and they're they're useless. <laughs> I'm not gonna say it, Kevin. <laughs> ticks suck. Ticks suck. <laughs> what do you hate more? Ticks or leeches? Ooh, leeches. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. We'll show you that in the video coming up. <laughs> Alrighty folks. So Martin and I are gathering firewood. We're gonna wrap it up in what's called a tump line. Tump line is a traditional method uh, indigenous people have been using around the world. Very popular here in California, the Southwest, uh, Mesoamerica. Basically what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this line I just found on the beach actually and wrap it up. And then we're gonna, once it's secure, wrap it around our chest and then walk it back. And we'll show you what I mean in a minute. So this is the tump line. Got up, uh, got all of our Redwood driftwood bundled up and uh, 
which allows me to have my hands free but carry a decent load of firewood back to the spot and get a bushcraft breakfast going. Dude, it smells great. Some Osage orange in there from bow making. Yep. <laughs> so never ending supply of kindling and fire starting material. <laughs> Is this bamboo? It's a Arundo Donax. It's a non-native giant river cane. But you can use it like bamboo. Oh yeah, you remember when we harvested the oyster mushrooms with the knife tied on the end? Oh, it was, it was this? Yeah. Fishing, using a little squid, keeping it simple, and uh, just gonna see if there's anything out there. Maybe some rockfish, maybe some ling cod. Fingers crossed. Give it a shot. Running 50 pound braid, 20 pound leader, and uh, two ounce weight. Size six octopus hook. It's pretty murky out here. So I've had two bites so far, both of them solid hits, like tut, 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 tut. And then I go to set it, and the weight gets snagged. So I didn't get either of those fish. Still positive, but there seems to be a pretty good ground swell, even though it's only a three foot swell. So the stuff is really moving around on the bottom, not just on the surface. Like finally. The grounds are real fine on this stuff. Yeah, it's an espresso grind, because I like dark, Coffee. <laughs> well, I guess we'll just split what we got. I'll just drink a little bit because no, I'm not a co big coffee guy anyway. <laughs> we're good, dude. We're good. <laughs> See how it is. <laughs> All right, so. I did it on purpose so I don't have to drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to skewer up some bacon and roast it over the fire. <laughs> Nice sizzle. Be done in no time. The fire likes that dripping fat, doesn't it? It's on fire! My tip is on fire! <laughs> Bacon's done, I'm eating this. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, yeah. Bacon, baby. It tastes like bacon. <laughs> Wonder. Mm, it's got a nice wood smoke flavor too. That's so good. Oh man, now I need coffee. Well, we got coffee. What's left from when Cincy knocked it all over? <laughs> mm. Are we happy with our bacon? Yeah. I'm always happy with my bacon. <laughs> nice. Get a shot, bro. Cheers. Coffee. Coffee. That's what oh, you're just choosing too. Bitter. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring him tea next time. Too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Too small. Yeah, this one's definitely too small. I just hooked it in the lip. Nice. So you can release this guy. It's a lot more orange in the fins. Oh. A lot of times I'll have orange on the belly, but definitely more orange spots. No blue, and they don't have like larger oh. patches like the male. Nice. All right. Good job, Tell man. Your friends. Oh, a fish kisser. Dude. <laughs>
Got myself a rock crab. Eating my bait. Getting some bait. We ran out of squid. Got to get it before the tide comes back in because it's not even a minus tide right now. We're gonna also got some smaller ones, a little closer to that size for eating. And then uh, we don't catch anything. That's our backup. There's a big one. Never turn your back on the ocean. Just a little green lake. I don't know if it's a keeper. Yeah, buddy. Woo! Uh, so yeah, I don't normally keep kelp greenling this small. This guy is just over legal, 12 and a half. They have to be 12 inches. This is a male kelp greenling. I'm gonna dispatch it and then I'll tell you a little bit more about these fish. Their flesh is not really firm like a rockfish, but not quite as mushy as a perch in my opinion. Um, I usually have some set recipes that I use for these, but uh, today I didn't bring anything for that. That being said, ooh, I do have something up my sleeve. We're happy, we, we don't have a skunk today. We've got mussels, we got kelp greenling. This guy's already been dispatched. Check out those colors. Like Chensi was saying earlier, this is a male. The female would be much more orange and yellow along the sides, orange on the belly. But uh, even though it's small, we're eating good. So, so Martin's filming and fishing at the same time. Um, this is the second time we've been able to use a piece of rope we found down here. First as the tump line for hauling in our lumber for our fire and uh, now as a stringer. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this fish. I'm just gonna run a blade from the vent here up to here, take out the guts and we're gonna save that and use it as bait because we already ran out of squid. <laughs> this is going down into a tide pool here, and that way it'll stay nice and fresh. Nice, little cabazon. All right, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. Is that legal? No, I don't think so. Damn. It gotta be 15. Yeah, not quite legal, but that is a beautiful cabazon, man. Nicely yeah, done. Buddy. All right, so we got the hook out. Beautiful little cabazon. Not legal, gorgeous fish. <laughs> Little hitchhiker. Ooh. Damn, you're bleeding pretty happen, bad. Dude. Stupid muscle shell cut me. So I'm gonna fillet this greenling in a style I learned in uh, Alaska from commercial fishermen. We've shown you this with bass before on our bass fish taco uh, video, but basically what you do is you fold up the pectoral fin. It's all soft here behind the head, so you're just going to cut down until you hit the actual spine, flip it around, and that's going to allow us to keep it right along the back bone. I'm going to flip it over. You don't want to cut through the skin, but leave it connected. Cut down to the skin. We're just going to work our way on the skin, like so. That's the worst flying job I've ever done. Throw it up on a board here. We're gonna cut above these bones here with the ribs. Just gonna make a cut down here. And then you'll feel there's pin bones along here that extend. So we're actually gonna make another cut right here. sever it and then we're going to cut at an angle right here and that's going to remove the part with the bones. So this is a boneless fillet now. <laughs> 
Nicely done, Martin. As always, Martin is the uh, god of fire. God of fire, yeah. <laughs> What's the other word? Uh, pyromaniac. Yeah, pyromaniac. <laughs> We're gonna cook the turkey now. Sola be honey. So I'm gonna put a little bit of that in there. Ooh, beautiful. some honey oh god oh my god that's good that's good honey rice vinegar in there just a little bit a little bit of paprika a little bit of pepper a little bit of salt more salt than that. We're using butter because Kevin is morally opposed to mayo. <laughs> Wild turkey. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's a piece of fat, man. Yeah. So you can see it's perfectly flaking apart now. We know for sure it's done. Taking it off there. Now we're assembling our sandwich. Okay. All right, guys. Wild turkey, fresh caught fish, bomby sandwich with foraged wild greens and wild radish root. And uh, yeah, we. I don't know. It was a great time. Let's take yeah. a bite. I'm hungry. Bread mm. needs a little hot. Red shale. Mm. But other than that, it's good. The topping's on point. Yeah, everything else is good. The bread's just a little stale. Yeah. <clears throat> I just realized I didn't put any fish in there. Did you get that? Fish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Now I gotta try it again. The fish. Oh, dude. It's good. Are you guys add this? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mango. Mango. Good call. Mm -hmm. It was a totally good call. Yeah. That was a fat turkey. Yeah. That's good. That's totally hitting the spot though. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, uh, another great collab, Fishing Chef, <laughs> two days, one night, wild turkey hunting, fishing, foraging, 
always some good cooking, always a good time. And uh, definitely go check out Fishing Chef. Check out his channel. It is awesome. Top notch. See you next time. And until next time, keep the old ways alive. alive. Dang it, Chintzy, you woke up so early I can't even film anything. I'm filming my tent and it's all black on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> my tent is on fire. Why? What does that mean then? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs>